mind if I do. <laughs> um, yeah, especially given the fact that I'm not going to be able to speak much in public anymore after January, being a lame duck and a former member of Congress. Um, I figured I'd take as many opportunities as I could to speak in public now before I leave. Um, the Katzen family, let me just begin by saying I know that uh, Cyrus was an enormous philanthropist and a man of uh, not only huge generosity, um, endowing a number of cancer centers and programs and arts programs, helping to enrich the lives of so many people uh, through their personal expression. Um, and their individuality, but um, he just took his talent and he made it uh, possible for a lot of other people to live fuller lives and better lives because of his uh, sense of humanitarianism. So I'm very um, sorry for your loss, uh, but I know that he uh, has an amazing legacy that lives on and all the people who benefit from the research that was made possible through his uh, generous donations and philanthropy, and all the people that benefited from his life's work. And uh, <clears throat> I know that uh, it's a big deal to be uh, introduced as family of uh, such an enormous uh, person of great consequence, but I know that you are car carrying on his work by all the work that you did to make tonight a huge success, and it's in large part due to your efforts to keep his memory alive in this effort. Um, to my colleagues in government, um, Ciro Rodriguez, I think everybody knows he's here. Uh, and uh, Dan Fay, uh, very much everybody knows he's here. But they might not know this other friend of ours um, is also here, Bud Kramer oh, Bud. from uh, of uh, research and um, there are so many people to acknowledge I know you want to just see me up here and gone uh, <laughs> but I, I have to uh, also acknowledge Karen Adams and the wonderful work uh, you know it just makes sense to acknowledge the people who do it All of you that are part of tonight's success, um, you all know who you are, and you're here and you're doing it because of what you're committed to. And I think that it all really um, was spoken really the most eloquently by, uh, by Carl, Dr. Potsack, when he talked about his work. And I think it's what I would want to say the most about my friend and colleague, Jim Moran. And the fact is, when Carl got up here, here's a preeminent scientist who people from clearly come all over the world to see because he is the best, the best at what he does. He is the premier researcher in this area and field of science and research. But does he get up here and talk about the molecules? Does he get up here and talk about the science or the genome and personalized medicine, how we're going to match? the RNA and the, the, so make sure we get the right treatment for the right person and talk all about the revolutionary science that's going on that he's part of. Does he talk about all of this in terms of the disease? Does he talk about it? No. He goes straight to the heart of it. He talks about it in terms of the mother and the daughter and how he felt compelled to try to get more tools in his toolbox to try to do something so that next time he could save that family member's life. To him, it's very simple. It's about helping people keep around the people they love. Now, it doesn't get more simple than that. The fact that he's got it in his heart. many people don't get that, who spent so much of their time and energy in this town thinking about programs and institutions and budgets and not people. 
And when Jim talked about this in terms of the American spirit and how, whereas this is not a, an illness that affects a large amount of people, so why should we care? You know, it, it goes to the very core of what our beliefs are as people, as human beings, what our values are. And the fact of the matter is, in my father's um, funeral card, um, in the mass card that he had, he had the one passage in the Bible, in Matthew 25, where it was the one section of the Bible that actually talks about salvation. And to paraphrase that, as Jim paraphrased to Tocqueville, I figured you had to give me a little latitude here to paraphrase the Bible. Please. I think to Tocqueville's easier. Uh, um, Jesus essentially says, that if you were there for these, my brothers and sisters, you were there for me. But he hasn't actually said it just in this one uh, interpretation of the Bible. He says, if you were there for any one of these, my brothers and sisters, you are there for me. So this notion that we've got to be there for everybody to solve the world's problems is not the reading of that. The, the reading is we've got to be there for one person. If we're there for that one person, we found salvation. It's, it's captured in the mitzvah, in uh, the notion that one miracle can change the world. If we believe that we can make a difference in one person's life, that's what changes the world. Otherwise, we're going to be overwhelmed. The notion that we're going to take on all these problems, it's too much for me to handle. I can't take on all of that. No. All we have to do is what's in front of us and what we can do. And Jim does that every day that he offers himself in public service. And, you know, he has been one of the people that I've, you know, found a lot of inspiration from. You know, there are people who, who work in this business, who are in it for the right reasons, and others who aren't. And Jim, I can tell you, has the kind of heart and um, real passion himself, compassion, for what the sense of injustice is. You don't have to live it to know it. Certainly, I was blessed not to have had to experience a lot of injustices in life. But um, I always try to be somebody that keeps my heart open to others' experience. My dad uh, taught me, just treat others as you would want to be treated. I wouldn't be able to stomach the thought of myself being in a situation where I was discriminated against because I had a pre-existing condition or I had my health care costs went too high in one, any given year or for my lifetime, and I was knocked out of health care coverage. That's why we passed health care legislation, making it illegal for people to be discriminated against on any and lifetime health and pre-existing condition. And people that can make that a partisan issue, it isn't partisan. Republicans and Democrats, last time I checked, both have pre-existing conditions. Republicans and Democrats, last time I checked, both hit annual and lifetime caps. And last time I checked, we're all in this together. And research on this illness today, who knows where it's going to lead us tomorrow. The work that's now being done to help push back Alzheimer's, a lot of that early research was done through a foundational grant funded by my family, the Joseph P. Kennedy Jr. Foundation, because of my Aunt Rosemary. And you know what provided the foundational? It was because of the study of people with developmental disabilities. You know where all the foundational research for the prevention of Alzheimer's is? The work that was originally done for people with Down syndrome. Who would have imagined 25 years ago that the work that we were doing back then would have accrued advantages to people today with a very different illness. The point I'm making is, who do we know today who may not have this specific disorder, but who will benefit because of the effort that all of you are putting in today, and will benefit from the work and the research that is done, because 
we all know that once you start peering into doing this research, other things are going to be discovered. And when these other things are going to be discovered, it's all because someone wanted to put their shoulder to the wheel and get something done for these folks. And I just want to say, that's why we're all in it together, because eventually, you know what, we never know when it's going to be us. We don't ever know when that wheel's going to come around and it's going to be us on the other side with that illness. And who's going to be there for us? Like Neil Muller said. You know, and uh, all I know is when they call on you tonight, you know, yes, you may have had a family member or connection, but you came whether you had it or not because you wanted to make a difference, and that is something that you all ought to feel good about having been part of, and I'm honored to be here. And I want to say about Matthew and his uh, family all being part of it, his, uh, his brother um, is a firefighter, and it's how appropriate they call it the paratroopers. Um, because literally they've talked about this in terms of first responders. And when you think about how this disease has impacted his families, in a sense, if you get this better information and get able, able to get this cure, imagine what you can do in going in and families like his being the first responder and being able to save people's lives. Because that's what one of his family members already does as a firefighter, as a first responder. And by funding the work that's being done in this area, essentially we're funding the researchers who are themselves the first responders and saving people's lives from this affliction. And so, uh, as far as George the Rat Peterson, all I know is I must have somewhere been connected to you. <laughs> all I know is can I make a claim to uh, your uh, company, Mantech? Uh, because if Jim says we're related somehow. Uh, does that entitle me to some of the dividends at Mantech? Uh, anyway, thank you all very, very much. Thank you.